In this video, I'm going to show you how you can create your real estate logo from scratch in Canva. This is perfect for you if you don't have the funds for a full brand build out or you're just the creative type and you want to learn how to do this because it's fun or you're just starting out. You have no idea what your brand is. You don't want to go to a designer because what what are you going to tell them? You don't even know what you like yet. You don't know what your brand is about yet. So you want to feel things out. You do know that you need a logo or you want one so that your feature sheets and your marketing and your social media looks more professional, but you're not quite sure how to get that. This is the video for you. I'm going to walk you through step by step how you can create a simple real estate logo that will be just fine and dandy until you can figure out what your brand is about or hire a designer to do it for you. Create a design. You're going to step number one, head over to create a design and select logo. That will open up uh, a canvas that's the right size for your logo. So step number one is to always make sure that you have the right file size and that's how you do it. Step number two is to hit T on your text box and then you're just going to want to type in your first name and we're going to pretend our realtor's name is Valerie and then we want to change the font and the simplest way to do this is to choose a font that you like. You're, you can definitely and totally change this later. We just want to get something out there that looks professional and that is easy to use and that you can use in multiple scenarios uh, until you're ready for something else. Now, I just want to say that I've had tons of clients who just use a name logo um, and are very successful. So it's all up to you and these are really great uh, and you don't need much more than this, especially just to get started. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is change the font. I'm going to head up here to the font panel and we are going to select a font that we like. So the, what I'm going to select here is, or suggest here is that Canva has all of these headings in the search area and you can choose one that matches the tone that you're looking for. So if you're looking for something elegant, you can hit this elegant button and a whole bunch of elegant fonts are going to come up. Now, I just selected one that's a little bit hard to read, even though it looks cool and it looks fancy. I'm looking at it and I'm thinking uh, it's a little too hard to read and legibility is a serious thing when we're choosing our fonts. We don't want to add that extra barrier. We want people to be able to read our our company name or our um, our name so that they start to get familiar with it and start to know like and trust us so I am going to go down the list here and try to choose a font that looks fantastic and I like this one this one looks fancy it looks great so I'm going to stick with this and then um, copy and paste the box and then type in the last name Okay, oops, put them beside each other and then shrink it down to size so that they're next to each other. And it's very important to have two different text boxes. You're going to find out in a moment. So make sure to do one text box for your last name, one for your first name. Now I'm looking at this and I'm thinking uh, the lettering's a little close together. So I'm going to head up here to the spacing tool and just adjust the spacing ever so slightly. That's way too much. I'm going to say like maybe 30. And then here, 30, we want them to match. And then I'm gonna bring up another text box and type in realtor, use realtor. And then what I'm going to do is add the opposites. I'm gonna use opposites here. So I'm going to, this is a serif font, meaning it has those fancy little feet on it. So I am going to use a sans serif font for my designation. And let's say this one looks great. And then I'm going to reduce the size, obviously. <laughs> and a good rule of thumb is if this is 38, then you want that to be about half the size. So let's say 20, and then you go from there. So 20 is still way too big, it's distracting. So we're gonna go right down to something like 12, let's call it 15. Nope, that's too big. We want it to be out of the way. The thinking here, why I said that was too big was because my first thought was, ooh, it's, it's distracting me from the most important thing, which is your name. And I don't want anything to distract from that name because your name is pretty much your brand. So you want to make sure it's out of the way, tucked off to the side. And then I'm going to adjust the spacing though, just to make it look a little bit more stylized. 
and then I'm going to see how that feels and looks and I think I might reduce the spacing ever so slightly and even bring it down a little bit more. I really don't want it to be distracting. So I'm going to tuck it off to the side there. I think that that looks fantastic as your primary logo, but there are situations when what you're going to need is a logo that's stacked. So there are certain situations like when you're working um, with designers or companies or marketing companies, they might say, well, you know, we need a logo that fits in this space, not this space. So when, <clears throat> when those things happen, what you're going to want to have is a stacked logo. So it's the same look and feel, but now it's stacked. Okay. And you can either put the realtor in the middle or off to the side again. I'm going to leave it off to the side. Okay. And now we have our stacked logo. Now, another situation that might come up is you want your submark and a submark is just like a little icon. It's a visual representation of your logo, but it's not your actual logo, but it still gives off the same feeling. So let's duplicate this again. And what I'm going to do is just work with the initials here, delete this. So the initials are VH and I can either leave it like this and this is your submark. So let's make this option number one for your submark. You can have option number two, which I would say would be something like um, curving this. So you head over to effects, curve, and then just hug the H a bit. Okay, so that is option number two. And option number three, actually, I'm going to duplicate this one. Option number three would be to head over to elements, type in square and choose the outline square. I'm going to shrink this down so it shrinks the lines a bit. And then I'm going to change the color to black. And now we have that as option number three. So you have three options for your submarks. They all still convey the same tone and feel that we have going on here, but these are great for things like social media. So let me head over to photos. So this is your new listing. Okay. You're showing off your kitchen to your audience on Instagram and you don't want to distract because the kitchen is so awesome. You don't want to put too much stuff on this post but you do want to have something that tells people, Hey, this is Valerie Harper's listing. Well, this is where your submark would come in. You just tuck it away in a corner and now you've created this branded look on your Instagram post. So that is how you create a super simple logo in Canva. You can even add elements by heading up to the element tab and typing in whatever element you would like to add to your logo. So let's say, um, twig, uh, and then you would bring it in and you can add it right in the middle or you can play around with it until it looks like something that you like. That works well. I'm going to copy it and then over here you might add it to the side and then over here you would just add it to your submark. and you can do that throughout. So that is how you create a super simple logo. I'm going to remove it because I just like how simple just the name is uh, super simple logo in Canva. One, two, three, primary logo, stacked logo and submark. And then you are good to go until you feel confident and ready. One last thing, color. I would stick to neutral tones until you really feel comfortable choosing colors or until you're really sure of the color that you want to choose. So I made that mistake when I first started my company, I chose pink, not the best choice because I don't like pink and I ended up hating it and never using it or never showcasing my branding because I hated it so much. So just be very careful of coloring. And when you are just starting out, the best thing to do is to just go white, black, grays, neutrals, keep it really simple in the beginning and then grow from there. 
I hope that was helpful. Hit subscribe if you want to be notified whenever we have new videos. Make sure to hit that like button if you liked this video. And I always love hearing from you, so tell me in the comments if you're going to make your own logo. And tag me, and tag me, tag me, tag me on Instagram so that I can see what you're up to. Uh, that's it. Happy designing. Thank you.